All right, we just got back from draft and we absolutely have to talk about this deck. This deck was so fun to play with because, well, first off, we went 3-0 and of the, of the games we played, we went 2-0 in the first match. I have to get my cat. We went 2-0 in the first match. We went 2-0 in the second match and then we went 2-1 in the third. Um, so this deck really did well. And honestly, for Red Black not getting a lot of attention as an archetype in this deck, I would say this surprisingly pulled together. And now we're going to go through why and what were some of those awesome combos that made that happen for us. So let's get started with our top tier creatures that really pulled through. Honestly, the MVP by far was these two dragon whelps we were playing with. So honestly, a tr creature that probably gets slept on a lot. But if you're in red or black red, um, specifically. I mean, black red, did, black didn't really contribute to this, but just being in red, this card does work. I mean, it comes out as a four drop, but then on turn five, you can be hitting this for, you know, five damage in the air if you want to keep it. And that already puts them on turns. You know, I never had two of them out, but I pretty consistently played this in every single one of my games because I was running two of them. And it's kind of hard to remove. I mean, with three toughness in the air, I mean, they're giving you something there. And so I was, this was a constant problem for my opponents. They had a really tough time getting this back. And when they did get rid of it, I had a second one, or we had a pretty good amount of graveyard interaction. And some of those graveyard interaction combos we're going to talk about are, was Urborg Repossession. Urborg Repossession, that was able to go ahead and pick that back up out of the graveyard. And honestly, that was the only thing I, um... The one other thing I was thinking of is Balduvian Atrocity, but that only applied to three drops. But that was still helpful for just sending my creatures in for that aggression, that attacking, and being able to know that I'm going to get them back out um, for another attack with Balduvian Atrocity. Um, specifically, Lagamos, we're jumping around a little bit. Lagamos was great. I mean, hitting that on turn three and then immediately getting 2-1, just attacking with haste. Typically, none of the decks I was playing against were moving at my speed. They were all slower, um, sometimes not having anything out on turn two or turn three. So uh, my two drop was able, or my 2-1 my elemental with haste was chipping in for damage. And honestly, by the time my opponents were on average, getting their board where they wanted to, um, they were already sitting at 10, uh, 10 life. So this was another one that played in really nice, just for the 2-1, the just having that constant threat of, you know, if you don't have something out there to block. And honestly, you know, there are, we're, threatening, we're threatening trades here because it's a 2-1, and a lot of things at the low two drop, three drop are only sitting with two toughness. So that was very good to have out. Um, this one, I put it in my top tier creatures because of the synergy that I would have liked to have seen come out, but honestly didn't end up happening. Uh, I, however, the menace does do well. I mean, I had this out with the Balduvian atrocity and you have two creatures out there with menace, both swinging in for, you know, three over here and two over there. Uh, that demands attention. This, I really was hoping I'd be able to use to get my Dragon Whelp, but honestly, my, my opponents were having a hard enough time getting the Dragon Whelp in the graveyard, so I, I actually didn't end up using this, but just a really, uh, really decent card to include here in the deck. And the last of my top tier plays in this deck would go to uh, Sorcery, none other than Enthrall to the Pit. Now, I really wanted to do the grand spanking, seven mana, kicked, gain control of target creature until end of turn, I'm tab that creature, gain taste until end of turn, and if it was kicked, sacrifice at the beginning of the next step. That is such a big swing, and that makes sense why it costs seven mana. The one time I did spend seven mana on this, um, they ended up using a sacrifice ability on the creature I was going for that I didn't realize was still um, a possibility. But I did use this several times for the four drop ability as a game finisher or darn near closer um, so honestly, having one of these in the rotation, I would feel really bad if I had two of these in my hand, but having one floating around, I felt like this found its way to my hand uh, quite a bit tonight. So I was, I was grateful for that stroke of luck. Now we'll go into some of our, our second tier our creatures that helped us with the win. Um, Phoenix Chick, always a pleasure to see this in your opening hand because right away we're chipping in for one 
it's annoying. It has that graveyard ability. So this is what I mean by a lot of graveyard interaction in this deck. You know, if I was attacking with three or more creatures, I can pay two and I can return it and it has a counter on it. That actually never resolved tonight throughout all the games. Um, I think the one time this was this was in the graveyard, it ended up making just a little more sense to actually Urborg repossess it right away and start attacking again. Just having my opponent waste their removal to get rid of this and letting them know actually, actually it's still a problem for you. Um, I mean, Urborg repossessed this from the graveyard to play it again, it literally just cost two mana. So it made a lot of sense knowing that they were having trouble responding to air. Um, so, you know, it's not doing a whole lot, uh, you know, one in the air, but still, as part of this aggro strategy, I think... I, I love Phoenix Chick. I do. Up next, we had a Phyrexian Warhorse. Honestly, didn't see too much play, but it was just nice to help contribute to that go wide, especially when I was needing to maybe fight their stabilization efforts and get a little wider so that their big creatures they're finally getting out, they're just going to get blocked by the 1-1. One, one. Um, I did have uh, two sources of white mana... So I was able to actually get this kicked, luckily. Um, but other than that, it didn't really do too much, but I was still happy to include it. I, it was a big, you know, being a 3-3, three, three, um, bringing in the 1-1, one, one, I was happy with it. Up next, Electrostatic Infantry. So overall, a great card. It just looms threat. The Trample is a great add-on. Um, you know, you attack in with it, bait blockers, hit it with an instant. It gets the counter. It gets the instant. Just a lot of fun to play with. Um, if you're in red and you see this coming around, grab it. Especially if you're running um, some sort of spell presence. Colt Conscript, that's the uncommon here that we run. I, I wanted this to just make sure I had stuff on the board. I knew I was going to be teching in. Um, so I love that I could pay two to get this back from the graveyard whenever anything else died. Whenever they zapped anything with, uh, with removal... I had this coming back out. So I was pretty much always attacking in with this. I always wanted to threaten, you know, two damage here, two damage there. It was a death by a thousand cuts deck, and this card definitely played into that strategy. Loved Cold Conscript. Yavimaya, Steel Crusher. Honestly, didn't do much more for me than being a 2-2. Um, so I'm not going to talk too much about this. It has Enlist and a Sacrifice to Destroy an Artifact. Didn't really get threatened by too many artifacts. Pretty much no artifacts showed up tonight. So that was just a, a body, you know, two drop for a body. Viachino Branch Rider. I had no sources of green, so this never got to see any kicker play, but uh, I think I did put it down to threaten, not to threaten, but to just have a blocker against big creatures in a main phase two. Drop that down. Didn't really attack in with this too much. I just didn't have it in opening hands, but I certainly would have if I did. I definitely prefer Phoenix Chick over this because attacking in the air is less likely to get blocked than attacking on the ground. And they're both one drop one ones. Obviously, this has the option of uh, a self buff, which is great. Um, you could definitely take stuff out, and um, I liked having that option. I just didn't get the chance to use it tonight. Splatter Goblin, I loved having, you know, I was really filling out my two drop spots with quality creatures, in my opinion. So having this guy in, able to take out a three, uh, a three toughness creature if they decide to block with that. They knew it was coming, though, so they typically didn't. They were just letting this come through. So again, it was contributing to the strategy of just two drop uh, or two damage to the life total. And that's how we were winning. Moving on to our spells and our tricks. Warhost Frenzy, honestly a staple in the uh, the black red and the black or in the red white go wide strategy. So I was I was trying to go a little wide here. Um, you know, all your creatures get plus two, plus zero oh, till end of turn. If kicked, creatures when they die, you draw a card. This was fantastic for really threatening. Um, you know, it's scary enough when your opponent goes. Uh, all creatures go sideways to attack, which is what I did before I would cast this card, and knowing that whatever they were blocking was going to contribute to a card draw for me really set me up to have directions to go for the next turns if there were any after I played this. Um, I just love reds, and th this card is an example of why. Urborg Repossession, a very familiar card. I love it just because you're paying one, you get two life, and you get a creature from your graveyard. So as they're responding with removal... They're having to deal with me getting that creature back and just recasting it. And a lot of these creatures have haste. So this played out pretty quick. You know, I would get the... I told, talked about getting Phoenix Chick. I would get Lagomos. And that was creating a 2-1 immediately into in the combat phase. So that was great. Lightning Strike. 
Obviously, we love this. I, I really enjoyed playing this early when they were just realizing they need to get creatures out on the board, and I would respond by removing them and just pushing back their ability to get established. This, I, I did actually end up drawing this with my opponent, finally stabilizing their domain deck, three life remaining, me drawing this, zapping them in. Um, they had four life remaining. I attacked him with Phoenix Chick. They thought they were fine. I zapped him with this from the draw on that turn. In addition to Lightning Strike, Aggressive Sabotage, honestly a little bit of a sleeper because in this deck, you know, you gain card advantage having the opponent discard two cards, and you play this for kicker, it does three direct damage. So talk about all the things, death by a thousand cuts, putting pressure on the opponents. This was, I was very happy to play this. Honestly, I wish I would have had a second one because I, I could have been kicking this left and right if I had them, and my opponents would have not had things in hand to be doing. Speaking of cards that I want two of, I am very happy I had Flowstone Infusion. Flowstone Infusion, originally, I was not sure. I When you read this initially, as I got introduced to the set, you think this is a buff spell. You would use this to buff your own creatures if they had enough toughness. Sure, you could do that, but really... This is a removal spell. This is a removal spell that I would be using before I use my lightning strike. They will put down their two drop with two toughness, drop this, they're gone. I'm able to attack in on the ground for more damage next turn. I loved having Flowstone Infusion in the deck. Thrill of Possibility, I uh, was just looking to get a little bit more um, card draw options, and this seemed great. I was very happy when I played this just to continue to grow my options as far as what I'm doing. Furious Bellow, this was helpful for keeping creatures on the battlefield. I did not use this to ever create more damage going in. Um, I was just trying to use this to destroy creatures that they thought they could block with. So, happy to include, always enjoying a good combat trick. And then finally, Battle Rage Blessing, just loving this whenever they're thinking they're getting rid of a creature that they were quite annoyed by. Throwing the Indestructible on it with that touch. These big swinging cards were just so fun to play with. As far as lands go, we're going to go real quick here. We had a pain land, red, white, uh, or black, black, white, pain land. That was helpful for, uh, again, pretty much the only white was Phyrexian Warhorse. Paying the kicker on that. And then again, a, a red, white tap for the Warhorse. Pretty much the only things, um, the other unobserved kickers were green and branch rider and green and herborg repossession. So, Overall, very happy. We went 3-0 with this deck. I love black, red, and I played previously red, white, and that was also a lot of fun. I like the fast and low to the ground. So, thank you for watching. Hope that was helpful. Hope you are more inclined to draft red, black next time, or maybe not if I'm playing with you so that I can draft it. Um, we are going to open up a pack but we're actually going to do that in a different video so you can look at the next video if you want to see me open the packs that i won for uh drafting so at the local game store if you go down and you draft you go 3-0 you get two booster packs but you can also talk about um maybe getting something else instead so i got two dominaria set boosters i'm just going to open up the one and they had promos today so we're going to open up a promo in the next video check that out if you want to see what we got thanks for watching